Okay. All right. Um, coming off an extremely uh, tough loss, uh, you know, one of, if not the toughest loss, you know, for, for me personally. And so, uh, you know, it's going to be real important that we put that thing behind us. You know, we always have a 24 hour rule. We talked to our players about that last night. Um, you know, we knew we were going to be in close games this year. That was really what we talked about going in, we're one and two, so we got to do a better job in those situations. Uh, playing a really good Kansas team, they're four and one. Uh, you look at their head coach; he's really good. Their coaching staff, what he's done, turning that program around, is very impressive. I know they didn't play with their quarterback, you know, last week, um, you know, against Texas, but defensively, uh, they're one of the best in our league. Offensively, uh, they're also one of the best in our league too. So, another tough challenge on the road. Um, we're looking forward to playing them. Questions? You mentioned uh, after the game that John Rice was cleared on Friday and mm -hmm. would go through practice this week. So what is the plan for him this week, and what are the chances he plays against Kansas? Yeah, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see how he is. You know, he hadn't got any 11 on 11 reps since he got hurt. You know, he did some 7 on 7 last week. Uh, we'll just see how he is looking. Um, you know, Timmy uh, continues to improve in a lot of areas. So, you know, we'll probably make a call probably Wednesday you know, about what that looks like. But uh, we are encouraged to, to get John Rice back practicing. Yes, in that kind of same thing, is there, is there an opportunity we can see both quarterbacks? Maybe? Yeah, I'm not ready to say that yet. You know, I think what we're just going to do as a coaching staff is take it day by day, uh, get through our two main practices, Tuesday and Wednesday, kind of see where we're at with everything, have a plan for Thursday. And um, usually you get to Thursday practice. That's kind of what you're thinking for the game. So. Uh, it, I'm not ready to say either way on that. I also wanted to ask, you mentioned putting this loss behind you when you're talking about losses. I mean, how do you get this team to respond? I mean, when, when you've been up, especially a game like this where you were yeah. in command throughout the yeah. whole thing and then have to go the way it went, how do you get this team to respond? And get them to yeah, that, that's going to be our, our, our challenge, and that's going to be our biggest challenge. And we got to find a way to do that. Tuesday's practice will, will tell a lot about, you know, where we're at. Um, you know, I really believe we got the guys that can do it, but you know, it's not going to be easy. And I was just honest with them yesterday, and that was a tough one. I mean, we did everything to lose lose the game instead of win the game, and and that's on me as a head coach. I mean, you know, our guys were playing hard, um, but we're just we didn't execute when the game was on the line in all three phases. We lost momentum. Everybody saw it. Um, real frustrating, um, I think, for everybody. And uh, we got to find a way to put it behind us. Walter Yates also went down uh, during the game on, uh, against mm -hmm. Baylor. How's he doing and what's his status? We got a lot of guys banged up. Um, you know, we didn't finish the game with a lot of the guys that we started the game. Um, you know, we lost our starting center in what the late third quarter. Ricky Barber tried it again. And, I mean, we had a lot of guys go down. And uh, we're, I'd say we're pretty beat up just as a group. Um, you know, we've got to do a good job in practice this week, you know, getting our main guys and our main guys to the game. And then we have off week. And it'll be, you know, after this game, it'll be really good to kind of catch our breath, heal up, um, and uh, get ready for that, that last half stretch. Did you have an injury at center as well? Where is the, what's the status of that position? Yeah, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll find out more in practice tomorrow. Uh, we'll see uh, the extent. Uh, of of our injury right there, Bula finished up the game. You know we had a, it was okay, had a snap or two, but uh, you know, we'll see on on Tuesday what that looks like. The last two games you've been outscored thirty nine to seven in the fourth quarter. So when you look back at the film of both games, are you noticing any any trends that are particularly bothersome on both sides of the ball? Yeah, you know I think more than anything is being able to execute. When the game's on the line, and that's kind of the one thing we talked about. We knew going to this conference that regardless of how things unfold up to that point in the fourth quarter, there's going to be close games. We have to be able to execute at a high level uh, to be able to win games and make those plays. And obviously, we didn't do that last week, and the week before, we didn't either. So uh, that's an emphasis we got to continue to improve on, and we'll keep coaching it and, and get better. Johnny Richardson obviously had a great game. That first play from scrimmage, 79 yards, is, you think his yards per carry in Big 12 games is 10 plus. Uh, just what does what he got to do to maybe get on the field more? Or, or what's, because uh, it seems like, you know, he hasn't been playing. You know, obviously he's 1A and 1B with, with RJ. Yeah, but. you know, we got two 
quality backs. We feel like they're both starters. I mean, obviously, you know, uh, part of coaching is getting the ball to your best players and uh, getting him more touches. Um, you know, RJ did some good things too, but uh, both of them are, are really good players. Gus, you've bet two games in the Big 12 now. Is there anything that stood out to you about maybe the level of depth, the, the physicality with the, with, with, in the Big 12 so far that maybe is you weren't anticipating or, or maybe it's what you thought was going to be when you no, got it? No, it's pretty much what, what I thought it would be. Um, like I said, we just we didn't get it done. We didn't get it done in the second half. I mean, that's really what stands out. That first game, uh, you're on the road. Um, your backup quarterback starting his first game on the road. That's a great environment. You got to play well. We had a couple opportunities, but uh, this last one we let get away from us. I mean, I think that's really the bottom line that you got to really keep in perspective, or we got to keep in perspective that we let that game get away. I believe we'll be able to compete with every team in our league. Uh, you know, I think we still got a, a good team. Matter of fact, I know we do, but we got to, and really it starts with me as the head coach get our guys prepared to finish games. Coach, you've talked all off season about wide receivers needing to be more physical. Is this the most willing to block receiver group you've ever had? Uh, no, no, they're getting better. I mean, I've had, I've had some, some really good blocking receiver uh, groups. This is a group that is getting better. We need to continue to get better. There were still things from the game that we weren't, you know, staying with our block long enough. Uh, so now we're, we're we got to keep improving in that area, but you know they're willing, um, and so we'll we'll keep harping on that. Coach Hinshaw said of Timmy that he needs him to not freelance as much. What does Timmy have the green light to do? Well, really, just to run our offense, um, you know, and not, you know, inside outside of the system. You know, that's when we get ourselves in a little bit of trouble. Uh, so we just got to do, and we got to do a better job coaching him too. I mean, you know, that's. That's really what stands out to me. The turnovers, you know, we're not doing great protecting the football. Um, that's hurting us. Uh, we've thrown some interceptions. We've thrown interceptions in the end zone and the red zone. And it's kept us from points. And so we got to do a better job of helping our quarterbacks too. Kansas was off to a really hot start. Their starting quarterback was a late last minute scratch before the Texas game. Jalen yeah. Daniels, I guess you're going into another game not knowing maybe yeah. which quarterback are going to play. But assuming that he does play, uh, what does Jalen Daniels do that makes Kansas I mean, dangerous? Well, he was the player of the year in the conference. I mean, he's a dynamic player. Um, you know, obviously we're expecting every, every week you got to expect you're getting the starter. And there's some really good quarterbacks in this league, you know, that were starters last week, last year, and they're returning stars in this league. And so, you know, but it starts with them. I mean, he was the player of the year in the conference. And so our defense will, will have their work cut out for him with that. You're reaching the halfway point of the season and quite a number of the transfers out of the portal have not really made more than a minimal impact. Has it been a slower transition as far as adjusting to what you want to see out of them? You know, I think so. And we've challenged uh, a handful of those guys to come on and help us more. I will say this, that competition brings out the best in everyone. And some of our guys we've had in the past have even raised their level. But definitely we need some of those guys to start contributing. There's been a couple injuries that's held a few of them. Uh, back, but um, definitely the second half, we're going to need those guys to help us. Coach, with last week's game, you guys got a lot of points on the board in the first half and other games as in the past as well. A lot of points in the first half, not as many in the second half. What can you guys do on both offense and defensive side of the ball to get more of those points on the board second half and then yeah. keep them off? Yeah. Um, you know, I think in both the games, in, in third in, on third downs, we got to get off the field defensively in the second half and both the last ones. And then we got to we got to find ways to score in the red zone. I mean, that that's really what stood out to me is we didn't put points on the board in the red zone. You know, we had the one drive. There was about seven minutes coming out of um, you know halftime. We finished with a touchdown. And then we got down there. Um, you know, we had a penalty. Uh, then we threw interception on the 30-yard line. And then we got down about the 25, third and six. We had the fumble that picked it up. So it's really from an offensive standpoint, it's about protecting the stinking ball. And it's about, uh, you know, scoring when you get opportunities in the red zone. But, you know, on, and defensively, you got to get off the field on third down in the second half. Guess you've talked about eliminating those turnovers. How do you go through practice? How do you kind of get those – Maybe get the guys to, to maybe get that out of their head a little bit yeah. and, and, and I mean, keep care uh, of the ball. You know, always like I mean, turnovers to me is coaching. Okay, and obviously it starts with me, but we got to do a better job of coaching our guys up 
in protecting the football. Um, you know, f football is a, a pretty simple game, and protecting the football is, is something that, you know, we need to do a better job of coaching our guys. And uh, right now the turnover bug is hurting us. It's hurting our entire team. So we got to do a better job coaching it. Kobe Hudson is coming off, you know, like a trio of 100 plus yards games. I was not much of a factor in this one. Was that just the flow of the game, or what did you see? In I don't terms know. Of that? You know. We had an RPO down there, the first drive or two down there, had a chance to, to score a touchdown there and uh, kind of went off his hands. But Javon Baker came up, made some big plays. You know, the way it is, what, what they're giving you is what, what it is. And so, uh, you know, we'll see each game. We'll see which, you know, we got two receivers, really three X's. Uh, Outstanding receiver, his own right. That you know, you just got to figure out ways to get those guys the ball. You're facing some adversity now. You're talking about turnovers, mental mistakes. How do you define a mentally tough team? A uh, mentally tough team, um, you know, in those moments in the second half. I mean, we we got to be tougher. There's no doubt. Um, How do you coach that up? Uh, that's 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 what you do as a coach. And obviously, I'm not doing a good enough job in that situation for us to finish games. So. Um, you know, that's one of the head coach's jobs. So we got to do better. I got to do better. Through two conference games, what do you think the statement the team and program have made has been? Uh, that we can compete in this league. I think it's evident. Um, you know, that's really what stands out to me. Um, you know, I think there's better days ahead of us. I know there is. Uh, we've had two tough losses back to back. Obviously, the one last week was in a different category. But uh, we got the talent. I believe we got the coaches too. Um, we just got to put it all together. You know, Jalen Daniels kind of steals the headlines for Kansas, but Devin Neal's had a very strong year running the football as well. What have you seen on tape for their running game, and how do you try to avoid similar problems in stopping the run? Yeah, they have a unique offense. Um, it's really unique. Uh, it's it's not your normal standard offense. They do some really uh, interesting things in their run game and their play action game. Um, and really, it starts with their quarterback, too. I mean, he really makes them go. The running back is outstanding. Uh, but I really, their scheme is real, real impressive. We're going to play assignment football. Uh, we're going to have to get lined up and, and make them earn it. I think that's probably the best way to put it. Guys, you mentioned Kansas' scheme. Their head coach, Lance Leopold, obviously made a name for himself. I think it was D2 or Wisconsin Whitewater. I know he's at Buffalo. Do you, any connections there with that staff? I mean, do you know him or, or any other coaches? No, or? this will be my first rodeo with, with his staff. I've always kind of kept up with him from afar, watched him, and really admired everything he's done. He's won everywhere he's been. And what he's done with his program, where he took over, what it is right now is real impressive. Um, you know, Jonathan Wallace, uh, the running back coach, played for me. That's probably the only connection, you know, that I know of as far as staff goes. First game at home in the Big 12, obviously expect a lot of recruits to be there. How do you think being on the wrong side of history kind of impacts the way that they look at the program? No, I mean, I, I think they saw the environment. They saw how close we were. Um, you know, these recruits can see the future. That was a tough pill to swallow for everybody. But the future is very bright, and, uh, and our recruits see that. They know that, and most of them can't wait to get here. And we talked a lot about Kansas offense, the Kansas defense. What do they do well? What kind of challenge are they going yeah, to pose? Yeah, the TFLs, with? I mean, they're one of the best in the country in, in playing behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, they're a top 25 defense. Um, interceptions, I mean, they're, they got some, some DBs that really attack the football. Um, so we're going to have to do a good job. And anytime you play a good defense, you're going to have to be balanced. And so... You know, we're going to, have to be balanced, but the number one thing is is taking care of the football. I mean, that, that's our number one focus moving forward. And like I said, that's the area that we got to do a better job in. We got to do a better job coaching. Gus, you talked about the, 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 the loss, how tough it was. Is there a moment as a coach when you, you see momentum swing like that, that you, is, it, is it a feeling of helplessness? Or, I mean, or how, do you, how do you feel like when you, when you really see things kind of just start? You, you know, each game unfolds differently, but. Really, from my standpoint, is we just got to make one play. All we had to do is everything. We didn't make one play, and it didn't matter if it was special teams, it was defense with giving up two two-point plays, offensively fumbling the ball. They pick. It. So, you know, it was just you got to make a play. And from you know, even towards the end, right there, I felt like we were going to win the game. That's just what you do as a coach. And uh, obviously, it didn't turn out that way. But but that that's that's what you do as a coach. Okay. Thank you, guys.